example, four or three, three, two, one. Hello, welcome to the final session of the Security Dev Room. Um, uh, let's let's welcome Peter, who will talk about Syslog NG. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, first, a few words about me. Uh, and sorry for those who were uh, there yesterday in my, uh, in my talk. Uh, a few, the first few slides uh, will sound quite uh, familiar. Uh, I'm Peter Tsanik from Hungary, uh, community manager at Bellabit, uh, Syslogengi's upstream developer. I'm working on packaging supporting uh, Syslogengi. First of all, what is uh, logging? It's a re recording of uh, events on a computer, for example, uh, an SSH uh, login message uh, under var log messages in a file. You can uh, see here, uh, syslogng itself is an enhanced uh, logging daemon with a strong focus on high performance uh, central log collection. Uh, why uh, central logging? First of all, it's ease of use, uh, one place to check for your log messages instead of many. Uh, it's also availability, so uh, even if the sender machine is uh, down, uh, you can uh, read the logs at the center location. And last but not least, uh, it's also security, as the first thing in, uh, in hacking a machine is to remove traces of uh, what you have done. But uh, if you have central logging, uh, then uh, all of your uh, all of the traces are uh, for, uh, forwarded in real time to a central location where you can uh, check it uh, what happened to the machine. Uh, there are four uh, main roles of uh, syslogng. First of all, it's collecting messages. It uh, also can process log messages, filter them, and at the end either store them uh, locally or forward somewhere. Uh, the main role, uh, the first role is uh, data collection, and I say data and not log collection, as uh, syslogng can collect practically any kind of data, uh, system messages, application logs uh, together, and they can co provide quite useful uh, contextual data uh, for either side. Uh, it can uh, collect messages from a wide variety of platform-specific sources like devlog uh, or journal or sunstreams as many different platforms are supported. As a central log collector, uh, it knows both the legacy and the new uh, syslog protocol and can use UDP, TCP, TLS uh, in, a, in any cases. Uh, it can also uh, collect logs uh, or any kind of data from applications uh, through files, uh, sockets, pipes, and uh, if uh, the application is started by syslogng, then even application output. The next, uh, and in uh, my opinion, the most important role, at, at least in a security environment, is log processing. With using syslogng, you can classify, normalize, and structure, structure uh, log messages. I will talk uh, about this later. You can even uh, rewrite log messages, and you don't have to think about uh, falsifying messages here. But uh, for example, uh, in many cases, com uh, you need to anonymize log messages due to uh, compliance requirements. Uh, messages can also be reformatted using templates. Uh, when a log, anal log analysis uh, software needs a specific fo format, like a, uh, a specific date format, or uh, have logs in JSON format, and, and so on. Mm. And uh, you can also enrich uh, data uh, using GOIP or adding uh, uh, fields based on the message content. The next role is uh, filtering. Uh, it has two main uses. Uh, first of all, discarding uh, surplus logs like uh, debug level messages. Or uh, the other one is uh, message routing. So uh, you can make sure that the right messages uh, reach the right destinations. For example, to, uh, 
you only send uh, authentication related messages to uh, a SIEM system. There are many uh, possibilities for uh, filtering. It can be based on uh, message content or uh, parameters, uh, using comparisons, wildcards, uh, and many different filtering functions. And best of all, uh, uh, any of these can be combined using Boolean operators. At the end, you can either store your messages locally or uh, forward to uh, many different destinations. Here comes a tricky question uh, for those who don't uh, check my slides right now, I mean uh, on, on a phone or, or so. Uh, which uh, syslog ng is the uh, which syslog ng version is the most uh, most used? Do you have any idea? Project started a uh, long time ago. Uh, Red Hat has version 3.5. The latest stable version. Oh, it's actually 3.9. What do you think? Which is the most used version? Any guesses? Uh, you you were the closest as it's version 1.6 as uh, there are over a hundred million Kindle ebook readers and all of those run Cisco NG for the collection. No, back to more serious topics. A uh, bit about uh, message formats. Uh, if you take a look at under Varlog messages, you, uh, you will see that most of the messages have the date, host name, and some kind of uh, text at the end. Uh, the text part is an English sentence with some variable parts in it. Uh, it's quite easy to be uh, to read by a human, but if you have a busy server with a uh, thousand messages a second, uh, it's quite difficult to deal with it. Uh, as you cannot, re uh, you don't have the time, and the machine cannot really understand it. Uh, there is a uh, solution for this problem. It's called structured logging. Uh, in this case, uh, events are represented as uh, name-value pairs. Uh, back to my favorite uh, example, SSH login example. That uh, you can describe the event as application SSH, the user root, and the IP address. Um, the good news is that SyslogNG has name value pairs inside right from the beginning. Facility, priority, and so on are all um, saved as uh, name value pairs. So th that, uh, th this is the way how, it could, how you could use them in filters or in templates. Uh, and uh, there are uh, parsers in SyslogNG which can turn uh, uh, unstructured and some uh, uh, structured data into name value pairs as well. Let's talk about these. The first one is uh, the JSON parser. Uh, if if uh, you couldn't parse uh, JSON with Cisco NG, then uh, you uh, then you can see inside the message just simply store the whole JSON. Uh, message somewhere. But uh, as Cisco NG can parse JSON messages, you can use the values inside uh, the mm, JSON message uh, uh, for filtering, for reformatting, for other destinations. Uh, so the, the uh, uh, data is much more valuable this way. Uh, CSV parser uh, can parse uh, columnar data into fields. The most popular example is uh, Apache access log. Uh, in this configuration snippet, you can see uh, the, uh, the column numbers. And if you take a look uh, here at the bottom of the screen, you, you will see that uh, the username is used in a file name template. So uh, each user has its own uh, log file in this case. Uh, the key value parser was added uh, just recently to Cisco Genji, uh, and it can parse uh, key uh, equals something uh, like data. Uh, the most uh, popular uh, example for this is firewall locks. Mm, for example, IP tables, but this one is from Zorp, another firewall. Uh, 
The most interesting parts are uh, in SysLogNG is PatternDB, uh, which can extract uh, information uh, from unstructured messages into name value pairs. It can also add uh, status fields based on the message content and do some message classification uh, like uh, LogCheck does. The downside of uh, this parser is that it needs an XML, pri uh, uh, XML database uh, describing the log messages. So uh, it can only parse uh, messages which, uh, for which you have a description. Back to my favorite SSH example, here are a few uh, fields. The first line has uh, some data which is directly extracted from uh, the log message, uh, the application name, uh, user name, source IP, but, but based on the message content, uh, um, you can also add that uh, the action of the uh, log was a login and the status was a failure. And based on this, you can uh, state that uh, you, you can classify uh, this uh, log message as a violation. Uh, Syslogeng Syslog can enrich uh, log messages um, and, give, and create additional name value pair, uh, pairs based on the message content. I already uh, mentioned pattern DB on the previous slide. You can also uh, use a GeoIP parser uh, to uh, add uh, geolocation based on IP addresses. For example, uh, a country name or uh, longitude, uh, latitude information. It can be used uh, in, a, in security as well to detect uh, anomalies as it's not a uh, real world situation that someone lo logs in uh, from Europe and from Australia at the same time. Uh, and uh, you can also use it to display uh, locations on a map. Uh, Recently, uh, we added uh, another parser which can uh, add uh, uh, metadata from uh, CSV files to uh, log messages. For example, uh, add the host role or contact person, uh, which can uh, considerably speed up uh, log analysis and also uh, helps uh, to create more accurate uh, alerts or uh, dashboards. Next, I would like to talk a few words about uh, configuring uh, SysLogNG. My first advice is don't panic. Uh, as uh, I often get the feedback uh, that uh, SysLogNG uh, configuration uh, is very uh, difficult. Yes, it looks difficult at first and sometimes even at second sight, but uh, once uh, you take a deeper look at it, it you will see that it's simple and logical. It follows a pipeline model where you have many different building blocks like sources, destinations, filters, and so on. And uh, all of these can be connected uh, into a pipeline using log statements. Um, SyslogNG Syslog configuration always starts with a version number uh, where it was uh, for which version it was created, uh, and some uh, global options. Uh, with most of this can be overridden uh, later in the configuration. Mm. You can define uh, sources, and uh, here, uh, as you can see, uh, here, uh, it, this is a single uh, source definition, but uh, it combines two different uh, so sources, internal uh, messages, so those generated by SyslogNG itself, and system is for platform-specific uh, log sources. Uh, this helps to hide away platform-specific differences, so uh, you can use the same configuration on uh, Linux, FreeBSD, uh, Solaris, and uh, it will find uh, uh, the log sources. Mm. The other one is a network source, uh, in this case UDP. Uh, here are a few destinations, the typical var log messages, it's a flat file. The other one is more interesting, it's an Elasticsearch destination, where you uh, 
specify the index name, uh, the type of the message, cluster name, and here you can see that it, it's using JSON formatting and uh, selecting the mm, different mm, fields what to forward. Oops. Mm. Here uh, you can see uh, some filter definitions and loading a pattern database for pattern DB parsing. And here is the uh, heart of the configuration, the log statements, where uh, the upper one uh, is for var log messages, uh, local sources, mm, uh, a f a related filter, and the destination. The other one uh, is more in, uh, interesting with multiple sources, filtering, pattern DB, and uh, sending the re results to uh, Elasticsearch. And here is a nice uh, dashboard from uh, Elasticsearch. It's a uh, world map uh, where the uh, log source was uh, IP tables and uh, the Attack, attack sources I, uh, are uh, visualized on screen. Here is the configuration how you can do this. First of all, uh, you need a key value uh, parser to uh, extract uh, the um, different fields from the message. In this case, uh, the source IP. For the source IP, uh, the uh, geolocation is looked up. Uh, as uh, Kibana uh, needs a specific format for it, uh, it's rewritten to that format. And uh, here uh, in the log statement, all of these uh, building blocks are combined. Uh, PEG is a uh, app, uh, software uh, in heavy development. It was formerly known as ELSA. It's uh, mm, web application for uh, security analysts, and uh, it's built on uh, syslog ng uh, and pattern db message parsing. Uh, the results are sent uh, to Elasticsearch, and it has a uh, it has its own uh, web interface. It's not Kibana. In in this case, uh, mm, there are some. Mm, nice graphs from coming from uh, from an intrusion de detection system. In a few words, what are new in uh, Syslog NG 3.8? It has this based buffering, uh, a new uh, parser which is easier to use. Uh, you can also write uh, um, parsers in uh, Rust. It has support for uh, all of the latest Elasticsearch versions and many, many performance improvements. Uh, Finally, a summary uh, what Syslog NG uh, can help in, uh, with security logs. First of all, it's high performance and reliable log collection. You can parse and enrich log messages, so uh, you can do basic uh, log analysis inside Syslog NG, and uh, you can uh, also uh, efficiently forward uh, log messages to other log analysis tools. If you uh, want to know more about SyslogNG, our central hub of information is syslogng.org, or our uh, source code is uh, on GitHub, where we also have an issue tracking system. And uh, we, if you need help, we have a mailing list or uh, for uh, near real-time help, we have IRC or uh, Gitter channels. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Peter. Uh, we have an applause. <laughs> um, we have five minutes for questions, so raise your hand if you want to ask a question. We have the first one here. Hi. Um, what about support for Docker containers or other containers? So instead of having Logstash or FluentD, uh, getting the container logs put into this and then enriching the log format with container-relevant information, is that supported yet? Uh, yes. Uh, we have a doc uh, Docker image, uh, and I just checked it and was quite surprised as uh, 
Mm, the development version of the Docker image had just a few hundred downloads, but uh, the mm, mm, regular image had over 100,000 uh, uh, downloads. I, so uh, people are using it in Docker. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I wasn't referring about running SysogNG inside a container, but rather on a host or a VM where you have SysogNG and it has a Docker daemon or it has Rocket or whatever, and you're running, say, 10 containers, and you'd like the logs from those containers to go back to the host base SysogNG to enrich to then send them on to oh. some other location. Uh, <laughs> so in, in order to do that, it, it would be useful to, for it to get some information from, say, Docker daemon to understand the name of the container and some other attributes. As far as uh, I don't use Docker myself, but uh, as far as I know, uh, Docker is logging in JSON format, and that can uh, we can process that. Uh, I I know that it's used, but personally, I don't have much experience with it. Okay, there's one more question here. Raise your hand if you was, want to ask a question. Uh, hello. Um, so my question, it, it, it gets more into like, I suppose, the legal aspects, which I saw mentioned at the start of the talk in your, like, your brief. Um, I suppose, like, are there ways which SysLogNG can support like, compliance to like, EU data protection law for not storing like, IP addresses or storing them in particular ways which better support like, some, like, I suppose, minimal standards in what should be captured and not captured? Uh. It, uh, what uh, we can do is uh, using pattern DB or uh, using regular ex expressions, you can find uh, IP addresses or credit card numbers uh, in log messages. Uh, both have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and uh, you can either replace with a static text uh, the mm, IP address or you can use hashes and if you use uh, a hash of the original then uh, you can uh, use it in further an analysis of the message. So you can uh, follow sessions what the given user did even if you don't know the name of the user but uh, you can fo follow where is it coming from, uh, what it did. And we have one more here. It's also fine to just have a comment or reflection or criticism or discussion. So, so most of the new assistants are running JournalD. What is your uh, recommendation? Where is the work split between JournalD and SyslogNG? Uh, JournalD uh, is uh, for uh, local log messages. Uh, of course, you can pull uh, log messages from it periodically, but uh, it's still not something for central log collection. With SyslogNG, you can constantly, uh, SyslogNG can re read log messages from the journal and uh, forward it to a central location in real time. So it's better suited for security purposes, I think. Thank you. Final question. Okay, let's thank Peter. And thanks for coming here. This was the final presentation for the day. Thank you.